and you've gone through what we have gone through, um, it's, it's a sign that we're headed in the right direction. And we are, when you look at the curve in the state of New York, uh, we are down, we're on the other side of the mountain, as we say, and the decline is continuing. That's different than what we're seeing in some other parts of the nation, where you see the, na the curve either going up uh, or uh, just starting to flatten. So uh, we're pleased with the progress that we're making in New York, and we're ready to go to the next phase, open a new chapter. Memorial Day is often a time when uh, society transitions. Memorial Day, normally we're getting ready for the summer, and. People are starting to think about summer vacations and summer activity. Uh, we have that on a moderated basis in New York, but it's also a time of transition for us, and we're transitioning to a new chapter on reopening, restarting the economy. Uh, this is all a situation that has never happened before, so this is a first case for all of us. And we're trying to learn as we go along. And we don't want to just reopen the economy. We want to have a really smart reopening. We want to watch those numbers as we go forward. And we want to reopen the economy to make it stronger than it ever was before. How do you learn from this? And that's the beginning of the new chapter that we're going to write. We started yesterday by reopening the stock exchange in New York. Uh, where the stock exchange was actually had, had uh, people in the building rather than just electronically. Uh, we're doing it on the numbers. Numbers matter. Uh, this is not about politics. This is about science, right? We're fighting a virus. The virus is not a Democratic virus. It's not a Republican virus. It's a virus. And viruses respond to science. And science is about facts and about numbers. And that's how we're doing it. We're doing it on the metrics. We're looking at the hospitalization rate. We're looking at the death rate. Uh, how many new people are coming in the door into hospitals? How many hospital beds do we have available? How many ICU beds do we have available? Uh, do we have testing in place? And do we have tracing in place? Just take the politics out of it, right? Just do it on the facts and do it on the science. And that's what we're doing in New York. And then uh, you wouldn't reopen everything immediately. You would do it in phases. And you would phase it by the most important businesses, the most essential businesses, that pose the lowest risk first. And that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, and we then have several phases for the actual uh, business openings. Uh, but we're in Washington, and the, the parameter is what should states be doing and what should the federal government be doing. I understand that states are responsible for the reopening. Uh, that's been the position of the states. It's also been the position of the federal government. So states are doing re reopening. States are responsible for testing. States are responsible for tracing. States are responsible for the health care system. States are responsible for the enforcement of uh, all the procedures around reopening. But at the same time, the federal government has a role to play, and the federal government has to do its part as we work our way through this crisis. And they cannot be a national recovery if the state and local governments are not funded. That is a fact. Uh, Washington is now debating their next bill that would aid in the reopening and the recovery. Prior bills have helped businesses, large businesses, small businesses, uh, hotels, airlines, all sorts of business interests. That's great. Uh, but you also have state and local governments, and state governments do things like fund schools and fund hospitals. Do you really want to cut schools now? Do you really want to cut hospitals now? After what we've just gone through, when we're talking about a possible second wave, when we're talking about a fall with possible more cases, do you really think we should starve state governments 
and cut hospitals? Would that be smart? Do you really want to cut local governments right now? That's cutting police. That's cutting fire. Is now the time to savage essential services? And don't you realize that if you do this, if you cut state and local governments and you cause chaos on the state and local level, how does that help a nation striving to recover economically? The COVID states, the states that, that bore the brunt of the COVID virus, they're one third of the national GDP. How can you tell one, heck of, one third of the country to go to heck and then think you're going to see an economic rebound? Also, state governments, state economies, local economies, that's what the national economy is made of. What is the national economy but for a function of the states? There is no nation without the states. Uh, they tend to forget that in this town, but it's the obvious fact. And we've made this mistake before. Again, look at history. If you don't learn from the mistakes, you're going to repeat the mistakes. It's that simple. And we have seen in the past what has happened when state and local governments were savaged and how it hurt the national recovery. Wall Street Journal, not exactly a liberal publication, makes the point that on the economy, cuts to employment and spending likely to weigh on growth for years. So even if, even if you believe the rhetoric, we're about reopening, we're about getting the economy back, great then if that's what you believe, you would provide funding to the state and local governments. The Federal Reserve Chairman Powell, very smart man, respected on both sides of the aisle, said, we have evidence the global financial crisis in the years afterwards where state and local government layoffs and lack of hiring weighed on economic growth. We want to reopen the economy. We want to get this national economy better than ever. Fine then act accordingly and act appropriately. This hyper-partisan Washington environment is toxic for this country. You have people saying, well, we don't want to pass a bill that helps democratic states. It would be a blue state bailout, is what some have said. Senator McConnell, stopping blue state bailouts. Senator Scott, we're supposed to go bail them out? That's not right. On Fox TV, Laffer, you want us to give our money to Cuomo in New York? Hello, not this week. First of all, this is really an ugly, ugly sentiment. It is an un-American response. We're still the United States of America. Those words meant something. United States of America. First of all, Mr. Federal Legislator, you're nothing without the states, and you represent the United States. Not only is it ugly, it is false. It is wholly untrue what they are saying, 100%. And there are facts. If you want to pose the question, which is, I think, uh, divisive at this period of time, but if you want to pose the question, what states give money and what states take money, right? There is, a, there, are, there is a financial equation that is the federal government. And you want to, if you want to ask, what states give money to other states and what states take money from other states? That's a question that Senator McConnell and Senator Scott uh, and Mr. Laffer 
don't really want to ask. Because the truth, the truth is totally the opposite of what they're saying. You look at the states that give more money to the federal government than they get back. You know the top, what they call donor state? You know what one state pays in more to the pot than they take out of the federal pot than any other state in the United States? It's the state of New York. New York pays more every year, $29 billion more than they take back. You know the second state? New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, California. Every year, they contribute more to the federal pot. You know who takes out more than they put in from that pot? You know whose hand goes in deeper and takes out more than they put in? Virginia, Maryland, Kentucky, Alabama, Florida. Those are the facts. Those are the numbers. The great irony is the conservatives want to argue against redistribution of wealth. Why should you take money from the rich and give it to the poor? That's exactly what you are doing. That is exactly what you have done every year. So it's only redistribution unless you wind up getting more money. Then it's fine. Then it's not redistribution. Take from the rich, give to the poor. That's redistribution. Yes, unless you're the poor, Senator McConnell, Senator Scott, because you are the ones who have your hand out. You are the ones who are taking more than others. Redistribution, you're against it. Except when the richer states give you more money every year. And then the great hypocrisy. They actually made the redistribution worse. When they passed three years ago a provision ending what's called state and local tax deductibility, that didn't level the playing field. What they did was they took the states that were already paying more money into the federal government, the quote unquote richer states, and they increased the money they were taking from the richer states. They took another 23 billion from California, another 14 billion dollars from New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Illinois, Connecticut. The hypocrisy is so insulting. Because when you start to talk about numbers, there are still facts. And people can still add. And people can still subtract. And they know what they put in and they know what they take out. And I know it's Washington, D.C., but the truth actually still matters. And Americans are smart. And they find out the truth, even in the fog and the blather of Washington, D.C. So my point to our friends in the Congress, stop abusing New York, stop abusing New Jersey, stop abusing Massachusetts and Illinois and Michigan and Pennsylvania, stop abusing the states who bore the brunt of the COVID virus through no fault of their own. Why did New York have so many cases? It's nothing about New York. It's because the virus came from Europe and no one in this nation told us. We were told the virus is coming from China. It's coming from China. Look to the West. Yeah, well, they missed it. We were looking to the West, it came from the East. The virus left China, went to Europe, Three million Europeans come to New York, land in our airports, January, February, March, and bring the virus. And nobody knew. 
It was not New York's job. We don't do international global health. It didn't come from China. It came from Europe. And we bore the brunt of it. And now, you want to hold that against us? Because we bore the brunt of a national mistake? And because we had more people die, we lost more lives? You want to now double the insult and the injury? By saying, well, why should we help those states? Those states had more COVID deaths. That's why you're supposed to help those states. Because they did have more COVID deaths. And this is the United States. And when one state has a problem, the other states help. I was in the federal government for eight years. When Los Angeles had earthquakes, we helped. When the Midwest had the Red River floods, we helped. When Florida had Hurricane Andrew, we helped. When Texas had floods, we helped. When Louisiana had Hurricane Katrina, we helped. We didn't say, well, that's Louisiana's fault. They had the hurricane. Well, that's Texas's fault. They had the floods. It was nobody's fault. And we were there to help because that's who we are. And that's what we believe. What happened to that American spirit? What happened to that concept of mutuality? You know, there is still, there is still a simple premise that you can't find in a book and Washington hasn't written regulations for called doing the right thing. There's still a right thing in life. The right thing you feel inside you. The right thing is a, is a calibration of your principle and your belief and your soul and your heart and your spirit. And we do the right thing in this country. Not because a law says do the right thing, but because we believe in doing the right thing. As individuals, as people, we believe doing right by each other, by living your life by a code where you believe you are living it in an honorable way, acting on principle, and you're doing the right thing. Why can't the government, why can't the Congress reflect the right thing principle that Americans live their life by. Pass a piece of legislation that is honorable and decent and does the right thing for all Americans. Why is that so hard? And if you want to talk about reopening the economy, then do it in a productive way. People think this economy is just going to bounce back. I don't think it's going to bounce back. I think it's going to bounce back for some, and I think there's going to be collateral damage of others. We already know that tens of thousands of small businesses closed and probably won't come back. We already know that the large corporations are going to lay off thousands and thousands of workers, and they're going to use this pandemic as an excuse to get lean, to restructure, and they're going to boost their profits by reducing their payroll. We know it. We've been there before. We saw this in the 2008 mortgage crisis where the government bailed them out, the big banks that created the problem, and they used the money to pay themselves bonuses and they laid off their workers. They're going to do the same thing again. That's why I proposed the Americans First legislation that said, a corporation can't get a dime of government bailout unless they rehire the same number of workers they had pre-pandemic as post. Don't take a gift from the taxpayer and then lay off Americans who are going to then file for uninsurance paid for by the taxpayers. Don't do that again. And if you want to be smart, we know that there's work to do in this nation. We've known it for years. You can fill a library with a number of books on the infrastructure 
and the decay of our infrastructure and how many roads and bridges have to be repaired, how this nation is grossly outpaced by nations across the world in terms of infrastructure and airports and development. Now is the time to stimulate the economy by doing that construction and doing that growth. You want to supercharge the reopening? That's how you do it. Then this nation was smart enough to do it before. We did it in the midst of the Great Depression. We created 8 million jobs. We built an infrastructure that we're still living on today. Where